Boy, do I have a list for you. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is so good to see you, I hope you've had a lovely week and are ready for another brand new ranking video. And today has been one that I have been planning for a while now, considering I have to rank some of Disney's most popular characters. And how have I deduced that these are the most popular characters? Well, they are the names of their own Disney movies. Yes, today we're going to be ranking the main characters of each Disney movie. Now, while I have ranked all of these characters before in the past, and I have checked, I think every single one of them has made it onto a ranking video, we've never ranked them in the way that we are going to do today, so I'm very excited for this brand new way of ranking them. On today's list, you may hear familiar names such as many of the Disney princesses, you might also hear many of the Disney heroes, and you might also hear some more obscure character names, seeing as there are a lot of Disney movies that don't necessarily get a lot of love. But as long as it has a main character, that character should be on today's list. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara, and I am a big Disney fan and Disney content creator here on YouTube. And I release long form videos every single Friday at 5 p.m. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, you can find me at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. So yes, today is a very long list. So without any further ado, we're going to jump into some quick disclaimers and conditions, as always. But if you'd like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company, and so I don't speak for the brand or the company. Any and all opinions in this video are just my own and don't reflect those of the company. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney characters and Disney movies down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all your thoughts down below. I cannot wait to connect with you guys about all of these incredible main characters in Disney movies. And lastly, for our disclaimers, a big spoiler warning ahead for every single Disney animated movie that we are going to be talking about today. And with that, we will move on to conditions for the list today. Today, we will be ranking the main or titular character of every single Disney animated movie. And just as an example of this, if the movie's title is Fox and the Hound, we will be ranking the fox and the hound. However, for this list today, we are going to keep movie titles that mention more than one character all ranked together. So with Fox and the Hound, Fox and the Hound will be ranked together and how I think their dynamic is and also how much I like them. The caveat to the title rule that I put in place for this video is that the number of characters that the movie title names can't be more than three characters. So yes, each number on today's list will either include one main character, two main characters, or three main characters. But I will be sure to mention the other characters if they are included in the title, but we just can't list them. And as one more exclusion for today's list, any Disney movies that don't necessarily have one continuous story arc aren't going to be in today's video. Think of movies such as Fantasia or Fantasia 2000, Melody Time or Fun and Fancy Free. While those characters you might be able to pick one character out that's very popular, they don't appear in the entire movie and so I really want to stick to just characters that appear throughout their entire film. That being said, I am including characters that appear in only half of the runtime of their movie. And I made that exception for one number on this list and see if you can find out which one it is. <laughs> and because there are so many Disney movies and therefore main characters of Disney movies, I am going to limit today's list to just 50 characters. And the reason for that is I kind of want to get in depth a little bit with each one and talk about their story arc. And so doing a list of any more than 50 today is really not going to be feasible considering I don't think anybody wants to watch an hour and a half video of Disney characters. Maybe you do. Let me know if you want longer videos in the future. <laughs> but yes, with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe it is time to start ranking the main characters of every Disney movie. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's rank some iconic Disney characters. We are starting today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 50, who is Maggie from Home on the Range. Now, Maggie is a cow character, and while she is technically the main character of Home on the Range, Home on the Range doesn't necessarily mention any characters in the movie title, so we're just going with the main character in this movie. <laughs> Maggie is a very cute cow character, however, this movie doesn't necessarily get me invested in any of the characters. If you've seen my ranking Disney animated movies, you will know I'm not necessarily a big fan of Home on the Range, but yeah, in my opinion, Maggie isn't necessarily memorable, and so... I hesitate ranking her any higher, at least she made it onto the list today, because some characters didn't. <laughs> but yeah, that's number 50. Maggie made the list, but just barely. <laughs> and next we're moving on up to number 49 on my list, 
who is Chicken Little from the movie Chicken Little. Now, I am not a fan of Chicken Little either. <laughs> the 2000s movies are an era that I am very grateful that exist within the Disney community because I know there are so many people that love them and that cherish them as childhood memories. However, I am not one of those people, so I do like to mention them for those fans out there. However, they're not gonna rank super high on my list. Sorry. But yes, Chicken Little is a character who is very cute in character design, much like Maggie. However, character-wise, I just don't necessarily latch on to his personality traits or his story arc in any way. Again, this movie's sort of a one-off for the Walt Disney Company. It really doesn't fit in with anything else that they've created. And so it's just a little, it's a little strange, but he's cute in character design, so he goes one point higher than Maggie. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 48 on my list who is Lewis Robinson from Meet the Robinsons. Lewis Robinson is yet another character that I am not the biggest fan of. This movie did not grab my attention and this character really is not one that I gravitate towards in any way, shape, or form. Sorry. But at least this character has a few more things to do in his movie that make us a little bit more entertained in watching him. But next we move on up to number 47 on my list, who is Searcher Clade from Strange World. Now I'll be honest, I don't necessarily dislike Searcher. He's not a bad character. He's just not one that's memorable to me. Much like the rest of this movie, Strange World just wasn't necessarily attention grabbing in terms of the storyline, although I will say the animation is quite beautiful. And so for having good character design, he goes higher than everyone else so far. <laughs> Next we move on up to number 46 on my list, who is Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet. Jim Hawkins is also a character that I am not necessarily the biggest fan of, although what ranks him higher than every other character on today's list so far is his rebellious nature. He's often a character that gets into a lot of trouble at the beginning of his movie, and the reason for his rebellious nature is that he does have some childhood trauma for seeing his dad walk out in his life. That is a very difficult thing to deal with, especially at a young age, and so I will rank Jim Hawkins a little bit higher than everybody else so far for that reason, but the rest of this movie doesn't interest me. Sorry. <laughs> in all honesty, the beginning of this movie is really where I emotionally gravitate towards it, but once Jim goes on the adventure with Long John Silver and the rest of the crew, it's not necessarily one that I pay attention to. And so next we move on up to number 45 on my list, who is Judy Hopps from Zootopia. Now once again, I personally am not the biggest Zootopia fan, although I do know that there are so many people out there that do love it. What I love this movie for is the bright colors, the great music. I love the song Try Everything. It's so good. But the characters for me in this movie are not necessarily one of the attributes that stand out, and especially not the leading character. Judy Hopps is a bunny character who's very adorable. However, her struggle in this movie is wanting to be taken as a serious cop. However, there hasn't been a bunny cop before, as the majority of the cops in Zootopia are bigger and more intimidating animals. And while there are many people that love Judy out there, and I love that she gets so much love from the Disney community, she just doesn't rank as one of my favorites. I don't dislike her, but I just don't connect with her. But next we move on up to number 44 on my list who is Hiro Hamada from Big Hero 6. Now another character that I know a lot of people love, but one that I personally just don't gravitate to. In his movie, Hiro loses his brother very tragically. However, there is a piece of technology left behind, who is Baymax, that allows him to still have some sort of connection with his brother after he is gone. Hiro sort of struggles in his story with his moral compass, meaning he wants to go after Yokai, the villain, and he'll do so without any remorse. However, Baymax and the side of Tadashi that still exists sort of holds him back and brings him back into reality. While I do think that Hiro is a very dimensional character, his sort of slip into this almost villain-like mind state for a very brief portion of the movie sort of throws me off from his character and makes me gravitate towards other characters in this movie rather than the main character. But once again, like a lot of other characters I'm going to list relatively lower today, he does have a strong arc and a great personality that I think a lot of people will resonate with, just not me personally. But next we move on up to number 43 on my list, who is Wreck-It Ralph from the movies Wreck-It Ralph and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now I feel like Ralph has significantly more of a character arc in the first Wreck-It Ralph movie, seeing as in his world he is the villain of his video game. However, he emotionally as a character 
really just wants to fit in with the rest of the town and be welcomed as an important part of his game. And not really receiving that from the Nicelanders or Fix-It Felix, he sets out on his own adventure to become a hero. I definitely think this movie is a lot stronger in terms of showing us the character of Ralph. However, we do get a little bit of additional character development in the sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet. While I do like the idea of the villain wanting to become one of the good guys, I don't think Wreck-It Ralph is necessarily one of the strongest characters to give us this arc as there are a couple of other Disney villains in other Disney films that do come around to the side of good, and I think they're a lot more interesting in terms of their character arcs. But next we move on up to number 42 on my list, who is Oliver from the movie Oliver and Company. Oliver is absolutely adorable. I don't know how anybody cannot absolutely fawn over this adorable little kitten. Now Oliver appeared in my Ranking Disney Animals video, and in that video I talked a lot about how his movie mirrors the story of Oliver Twist, which is a musical that primarily premieres on the stage. And Oliver, the kitten in this movie, really mirrors the character of Oliver Twist. He is an orphaned kitten who ends up finding love in a family where he didn't originally expect to find it. So yeah, while I don't necessarily think he himself is the strongest character in this movie, I do think he is a very good driving force for all of the other characters in his movie to progress the storyline. He is so incredibly cute. I just do wish he did a little bit more in his movie. But with that, we'll move on up to number 41 on my list, who is Arthur from The Sword in the Stone. Now, Arthur is a young boy who eventually pulls the sword from the stone and is named the king. Arthur is a very young boy, and so he's very clumsy and very naive in terms of the world. I would not necessarily call him a strong character. However, I do think he does garner audience sympathy because of the family that he has to grow up with. His father, Sir Ector, is very abusive towards him, and so it really makes us want to empathize with Arthur's situation. And once he partners up with his friend Merlin, ooh, these two are a great duo. But Arthur on his own isn't necessarily one of my favorites. It also doesn't necessarily help that Arthur himself as a character had three separate voice actors perform the role in this movie. And so it can feel a little disconnected from one scene to another, or even within the same scene. <laughs> but I do like him as a character. I think this movie has a lot of history that I really love, and there are certain aspects of this character that I do sympathize with and really do enjoy seeing. But with that, we've reached number 40 on today's list. At number 40 is Basil of Baker Street from the movie The Great Mouse Detective. I really like this character. He is this sort of Sherlock Holmes mouse character. In his movie, we watch him face the evil mastermind Radigan, and following him in this story arc is honestly so fun. I think he's very charismatic and has some really great comedy moments. Again, not necessarily one of my favorite characters on the list, but his character traits definitely keep him out of the bottom 10 on today's list. And with that, we're moving on up to number 39 on my list, who is Emperor Kuzco from The Emperor's New Groove. Now, as a titular character, as the main character of his movie, I don't necessarily think he ranks as high as how he does in other categories. See, as we're introduced to him right away in this movie, and he is very vain and self-obsessed. This is a Disney character that we're introduced to, and we immediately get bad vibes from him. It's not until he's transformed into a llama and spends a lot of time with Pacha and getting to know him that we actually see growth and an arc from him. And you might say, well, yes, but we do get this arc from him. True, but in my opinion, first impressions are everything. And seeing as this change of heart happened very recently for him in his life, we do know that he grew up all the way to the age that he was at the beginning of this movie, in this mindset. And so for me personally, it's kind of hard to connect because he really is only out for himself and doesn't really think about or care about the people that are around him. I will admit he comes around in the end, but that's why he's gonna rank lower on today's list. <laughs> but up next, we move on up to number 38 on my list, who is Bolt from the movie Bolt. Now, Bolt is very cute. He has ranked very high on other videos that I've ranked him in. I think he appeared in Disney Animals, but also in Disney Pets, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Bolt is a dog who is very cute, and he is raised on the set of a movie. The character that he plays is a super dog, and so because he never leaves the set, he feels as though he has these powers in real life. But through some strange circumstances, he is forced to travel across the country on his own without any of the superpowers being real for him, and so he needs to find his place as a 
a real dog. I do like this character arc. This is the point of the video where I actually start to really like the characters in their arcs. So I do like this character in his arc. It's just not necessarily as strong for me as a lot of others on today's list. But with that, we're moving on up to number 37 on today's list. My only trio of characters on today's list, who is Panchito, Jose Carioca, and Donald Duck from the movie the Three Caballeros. Now seeing as the movie title is The Three Caballeros and the conditions for the list is we can't have any more than three, all three characters are getting ranked together at the same number. Now if I had to put these characters in any sort of order, I would probably put them Jose Carioca, Panchito, Donald, really because of pure icon, you can't really put Donald below the other two. <laughs> and his temper, come on, it's so cute. But yes, I do love all three of these characters. In my opinion, they work best when they are all together. As separately, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily remember their own individual character traits, but more so how they appear as performing together on a stage. But these characters are very cute. I do like them very much, and I do like their storyline quite a bit. But next we move on up to number 36 on my list, who is Duchess and Thomas O'Malley from the movie The Aristocats. Now theoretically, the Aristocats movie title sort of directs us at a big group of cats who is the entire family. However, because we can't have any more than three, I either had to go with the three kittens who are Toulouse, Berlioz, and Marie, or the parents who are Duchess and Thomas. And while I do think the kittens are very cute and I do love them quite a bit, I do think the starring characters of this movie really are the parents. Duchess and her kittens are taken from her home and she needs to find her way back to her owner. She's a mother who is struggling to perform this task while also taking care of three very lively kittens. <laughs> she is a wonderful mother, truly, and I love this character and admire her so much. But then eventually, Thomas O'Malley enters the picture, and Duchess and Thomas begin to court, and Thomas is brought into the kitten family as a strong and very wonderful adoptive father to the three kittens. I really love these two characters' dynamic, and I really think they make for a great, compelling duo who leads this movie. But next, we're moving on up to number 35 on my list, one that I'm definitely gonna get some heat for. At number 35 is Aladdin from the movie Aladdin. Now, I know that Aladdin is a fan favorite to many. Again, just not personally. <laughs> Aladdin tells the story of the young poor boy Aladdin who lives in the streets and wants to become so much more in his life. He meets the princess of Agrabah in the city, and through some strange events he gets a hold of a magic lamp which grants him three wishes, and eventually he is able to free his friend the genie and court the princess Jasmine. I really like this storyline and I really do think a lot of the characters are strong in this movie. The one reason that Aladdin himself ranks so low is that he lies consistently throughout the entire movie. And the difference with this lie, as opposed to other characters that are lying or taking on a false image in their movie, Aladdin is doing it out of a sense of insecurity, specifically at a point where he doesn't need to. It is evident that Princess Jasmine cares for him and likes him as he is as a poor boy right from the beginning. And so when he feels the need to lie to her all the way through like the three quarter act of the movie, it sort of gets old and very much just makes Aladdin seem like a character who never learns from his mistakes. While by the end of the first movie he definitely does learn these mistakes and it seems like a very solid point, once you move on to the Aladdin sequels, of which I've done an entire video ranking Disney's animated sequels, which I will link above in case you're interested, we learn in the sequels that Aladdin still continues to lie to Princess Jasmine. And so yes, the reason why I rank him so low is that he continually lies to his significant other, who wants to trust him and wants to create a very trustworthy and healthy relationship. I like him and I feel for him and where he's been in his life, but I think we could be a little bit more truthful, Aladdin. Come on now. <laughs> Next we move on up to number 34 on my list, who is the character Tarin from the movie The Black Cauldron. Now I really do like the character of Tarin. I like this movie in general, but this character in all honesty, just being honest, very much gives Disney princess energy. <laughs> Tarn is a young assistant pig keeper who dreams of a life that is so much bigger than what he is living. He wants to become a hero and a warrior, and so he wants to set out on this adventure. Eventually he does, which brings him face to face with the Horned King, who is trying to take over the entire land with his army of the undead. And Tarn and his friends by the end of the movie are able to save the day. Again, I really like this character. The only reason that he doesn't necessarily rank higher than where he does on today's list is because he can be a little whiny and annoying. <laughs> Tarin is a child and so when he's told that he's not meant to do bigger things at the beginning of his movie, he does tend to have this 
cranky energy, which does go away once he's in the center of all of the action of this movie. However, yeah, it's not necessarily the best energy at the beginning of the movie, but it gets better as it moves along. Next, we move on up to number 33 on my list, who is the character Mowgli from The Jungle Book. Now, The Jungle Book tells the story of Mowgli, who is born and raised in the jungle, and eventually finds his way back to the Man Village. Mowgli is a great character. I very much do think that he garners audience attention very well. I do think he is a little young and naive, though. When Baloo enters his life and sort of brings this sort of nonchalant, non-caring energy into his life, Mowgli follows along with that. However, when Bagheera, who is the more level-headed and realistic character in this movie. When Mowgli's with Bagheera, he again sort of more so follows that strict line of life. Mowgli's very malleable and tends to mold himself to the characters that he is around, which can be a good thing because a lot of characters end up liking him. However, it does sort of deprive audiences of knowing who the real Mowgli is when he is purely alone. But I like him very much. I think he does have a really great energy in his movie, and I like following this character all the way through the storyline. Up next is number 32 on my list who is Ichabod and Mr. Toad from the movie The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. And yes, the rule where I said the characters have to appear in at least half of their runtime is specifically for these two characters. <laughs> now, Ichabod and Mr. Toad, the entire movie, is actually split down the middle. The first half of the movie tells the story of Mr. Toad, and the second half tells the story of Ichabod Crane. Mr. Toad is this very wild and crazy toad who gets these manias or very obsessive fixations on one thing at a time which gets him into a lot of trouble, but it is very fun getting to watch him get out of that trouble. And Ichabod is a school teacher who is courting the young Katrina Von Tassel in his movie. However, he makes the enemy of Brom Bones, who tells him a very scary ghost story, which ends up seeming to have come true at the very end of the story. In all honesty, I think both of these main characters are really fun and really funky, and I only wish that each one of them had their own full-length animated feature. Don't get me wrong, I love them both as shorts, but I do think it would be really cool to see a fully fleshed out story of each one. And so while I do love both of these characters very much, and they are the titular characters of their movie, I do feel the need to keep them on the lower end of the list, specifically because they only get half of their runtime. Next, we move on up to number 31 on my list, who is Todd and Copper from the movie The Fox and the Hound. Now, these two characters have a truly heart-wrenching dynamic. The Fox and the Hound tells the story of Todd and Copper, the Fox and the Hound, who are raised in the same vicinity and become friends at a very young age. However, as the story goes on, their societal norms as animals is to be predator and prey, and so that friendship slowly falls apart. They are able to reconnect at the end, but the majority of this movie is very difficult to watch, and the relationship that they have with each other is the central focus. This movie is very good, but very sad, and I do love both of these characters very much, but I do like the character of Todd more than the character of Copper. And the reason for that is that Todd is emotionally invested in this friendship throughout the entire movie, whereas Copper really does falter to the side of the societal norms and tries to become the predator that he is supposed to be in order to catch Todd. Very heart-wrenching, but that's what makes them rank so high is that they really get audiences' attention. Up next is number 30 on today's list, who is the character Kenai from Brother Bear. Now, while Kenai is definitely not the most likable character, I really do think he has a very strong arc that does invoke a lot of emotion. At the very beginning of his movie, Kenai ends the life of a bear. As the movie goes on, he eventually transforms into a bear and becomes friends with a little bear named Koda. He eventually learns that the bear that he had an altercation with at the beginning of the movie was Koda's mother. And so when it comes time, Kenai eventually makes the decision to stay a bear in order to take care of this little cub. So while the act that he does commit at the beginning of his movie is definitely not a good look. He definitely has a very big redemption arc at the very end of his movie. And I think watching him go from this very vengeful character to one that is a lot more lighthearted and kind and compassionate is very compelling in terms of a leading character in a Disney movie. Next, we move on up to number 29 on the list, who is Tarzan from the movie Tarzan. Tarzan is the man of the jungle. He and his family are shipwrecked when he is very, very young, and his parents tragically pass away. He is then raised by apes, and eventually meets a group of London explorers and falls in love with one of them, who is Jane. I really do like Tarzan's character arc quite a bit. I think he's a very strong character. I think this movie has a very strong arc. He just doesn't land as one of my 
top, top characters. I do like him quite a bit, though. Moving on up to number 28 on my list. This one is painful to place because I really do love this character. At number 28, is Princess Aurora from the movie Sleeping Beauty. Now, while I can make a lot of arguments that the movie Sleeping Beauty is not actually about Princess Aurora, but rather the fairies in this movie, meaning the three good fairies in Maleficent, Princess Aurora is the titular character. She is the Sleeping Beauty of the movie. And so when it comes to ranking Princess Aurora, we can't really place her any higher than this, considering she doesn't do a whole lot in her movie. Again, this was a time in the Disney Company when a lot of the main characters weren't necessarily the focal point of the movie. And so I would definitely say that Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether are significantly more well-rounded characters than Princess Aurora. However, being an official Disney princess and bringing her into the Disney parks has brought her a lot more energy and attention and character development, in all honesty. Because she's so much more in the public eye, we've needed so much more of an arc from her, and so the Disney company has really tried to create that. But when you're watching her movie, she definitely seems like a side character. So while she has one of the most beautiful princess voices of all times, I can't really put her any higher than this because she's not really in her movie a lot. But I do love her quite a bit. But next we move on up to number 27 on my list, who is Winnie the Pooh from The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Now I really do like Pooh Bear, he is such a sweet character and he's very kind to all of his friends. I think Winnie the Pooh has a lot of great qualities and I think his love of honey is very cute and does get him into a little bit of trouble in his movie. I don't think he necessarily has one of the strongest character arcs, but his cuteness level definitely increases him to the point where he deserves this placement on today's list. He's just very sweet and very accepting of every single friend he has, and that's a great quality. Next is number 26 on today's list, who is Pongo and Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. Now obviously, 101 Dalmatians, we can't include all 101. That's just not realistic. So in choosing, I did choose Pongo and Perdita because they do give birth to the 15 puppies, but also without blinking, adopt 84 other puppies. And the actions that these two dogs specifically take in their movie do end up saving all 99 puppies from Cruella de Vil. I think it is very easy for audiences to become very emotionally invested in them. And they're also very sweet and cute because they're dogs. And I love dogs. They're so cute. But with that, we've reached number 25 and the halfway point of today's list, who is Bernard and Miss Bianca from The Rescuers and The Rescuers Down Under. I love Bernard and Bianca. I think they are such an adorable couple. They have a wonderful romance with each other, but also embark on multiple adventures in order to save children around the world. I think these two are power couple at the fullest. They are not only sweet and cute, but also brave and resilient to everything that the world throws at them. Next is number 24 on today's list, who is Simba from The Lion King. Now, I really like this character. However, he definitely does start off as more emotionally unintelligent. He sort of blindly is just very much looking forward to taking over as the King of the Pride Lands one day, so that way nobody can tell him what to do. However, he does face a series of very tragic events in his life, which force him to grow up very quickly and to prove himself as a true leader and a true king. I do very much like this character's arc, and I think it's important for him to start out where he does. However, there are other characters' arcs I like just a little bit more. Next, moving on up to number 23 on my list is Alice from the movie Alice in Wonderland. Alice is a fun and curious character, and I really do like getting to follow her throughout the events of this movie. She, unlike any other character, is very spontaneous, very zany, and very naive. She doesn't really care about the sensical or nonsensical. She just wants to go along with life in a very whimsical and carefree way. And I do think this has a sort of sweetness to her, but it also does make her a little immature. Although her wants in this movie are very simple, the first three quarters of this movie is where is the white rabbit going? And the last 15 to 20 minutes is I've got to get out of Wonderland. She makes it very clear cut and simple of what she is going after and she goes after it. But next we move on up to number 22 on my list, who is Cinderella. Now I really do like the character of Cinderella, I do just wish she had a little bit more agency in her story. Cinderella grows up in a household where she is abused and humiliated on the daily. She is forced to become a servant in her own home and dreams of a better life. Eventually there is a ball held in the kingdom and she goes and dances with the prince. 
She leaves behind her glass slipper, and the prince says he will marry the girl who fits the slipper. So while I do think that Cinderella is a very strong character in terms of character design and voice work, I do wish she was able to have a little bit more verbal agency in her story. She has a few lines where she sort of tests the limits of what she's able to say to her stepmother and stepsisters, but it never feels like a full, I'm gonna stand up for myself. But regardless of this, I do still think she's a very strong character and one that audiences will really love when watching this movie. Next we move on up to number 21 on my list, who is Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon. Now I really like Raya. I do think in all honesty that she is one of the more subtle characters in her movie. There are a lot of other characters in this movie with very strong character designs and very strong personalities, and she is one of the more subtle and demure characters. <laughs> demure. But with that subtlety comes a very strong sense of strength. She knows what she has to do, she is going to go on an adventure to do it, and she's going to find the best way to achieve her goal. And she also learns from Sisu at the very end to trust in other people. When she has that scene underground with her group and Namari, and she has to take the step in order to trust Namari, it always makes me choke up when she says, then let me be the first. I think that's such a strong line and it really shows who Raya is as a character. I also love her relationship she has with her father. I think it's very sweet and very cute. Next, moving on up to number 20 on the list is Mirabelle from the movie Encanto. Now, Mirabelle is a wonderful character. She's one of the only characters in her family to not have a special gift. And so her entire arc is figuring out what makes her special when there are so many supernatural gifts around her that really seem very, very special. I think being one of the ordinary characters in a room full of extraordinary people can very much seem like she is not an interesting character. However, I really do think Mirabelle is very relatable to a lot of people, and I think for that reason in particular, she is a character whose personality you really want to follow through to the end and find out what happens to her. Next, moving on up to number 19 on the list is Pinocchio from the movie Pinocchio. Now, I really love this character's arc, especially because we see him from essentially his birth. The Blue Fairy brings him to life, and he has no knowledge of how the world works in any way, shape, or form. He has a plethora of questions, and he is just a very curious boy. And so while I do think a lot of people could be annoyed with how naive and gullible that Pinocchio is, I think this is very important for his character arc because by the end of the movie, he does prove himself to be brave, truthful, and unselfish, and even sacrifices his own life to save his father's. Oh, I love Pinocchio. He's such a true hero. Next up at number 18 on the list is Rapunzel from the movie Tangled. I love Rapunzel. I think she's a really great character, and I really like watching her story arc play through. Now, I'll be honest, the only reason that she doesn't rank any higher than this is because I do think that Flynn Rider sort of steals the spotlight from her. This is one of the only Disney princesses that I watch their movie and I'm like, wow, I think the prince is really stealing the scene right now. Flynn is just so charismatic and really has those funny one-liners to counteract Rapunzel's naivete and her wide-eyed wonderment. And while I do think that is a very strong character arc that a lot of people will want to latch on to and emotionally invest in. I also think there are a lot of people that will, on the contrary, invest in Flynn Rider instead. But I think the trick of this movie is to invest in both of them emotionally and to watch them grow together as a couple. I just love Rapunzel. I think she is wonderful and one of the only magical Disney princesses. But next we move on up to number 17 on the list, who is the character Asha from the Disney movie Wish. Now, I really love this character. I think she has so much personality, strength, and determination to save her city from the evil King Magnifico. Asha is a young girl in the city of Rosas who is determined on freeing the wishes of all of the citizens, which are being held by the king. She is eventually painted by him to be a criminal and an outlaw within the city, and turns the city against her. Eventually, she frees the wishes of everyone there, and everyone realizes what kind of human King Magnifico is, and eventually revolts against him. Asha is such a wonderful character, strong all the way through the end of her movie, and she's never unwavering in moments of adversity. Next, we move on up to number 16 on the list, who is Robin Hood from the movie Robin Hood. I love this character. I think he is so funny and spunky, while also always doing the right 
thing. Robin Hood's motto is steal from the rich to give to the poor, and while that's not necessarily a good thing, and I don't condone stealing in any way, shape, or form, the people that he does steal from, specifically Prince John, is the villain of this movie. He is very evil. It is so satisfying to watch this movie and to see Robin Hood just continuously win. Prince John is such an evil character that you really just want to see his entire plan crumb crumbling down, and with Robin Hood being the one that makes that happen, uh, it's just the cherry on top. Robin Hood is such a great character, not only in his work of always doing the right thing, but also in his relationship. I think him and Maid Marian are very sweet and very adorable as a couple. But next we move on up to number 15 on the list, who is the character Pocahontas from the movie Pocahontas. Now I'm going to be very honest as I say every time that I address this movie, which is that Pocahontas is not culturally or historically accurate in any way. This movie paints the story of Pocahontas and John Smith falling in love and making a Romeo and Juliet-esque situation between the colonizers and the indigenous characters. This movie is very artistically beautiful, which is why I like to talk about it, but the cultural inaccuracies do tend to throw me off. And going back to Pocahontas, while this is an inaccurate depiction of the historical figure Pocahontas, if you are to separate this individual character from the historical figure, I think this character on her own is incredibly strong, incredibly brave, incredibly wise beyond her years, and is easily the strongest thing in this entire movie. Yes, the music is beautiful, but realistically the only speaking character that I really like from this movie is Pocahontas. Well, besides Grandmother Willow. She's cute. <laughs> so yes, while I always say that the character is very wonderful, it is important to distinguish character from the real life historical figure. Next we move on up to number 14 on the list, who is Lilo and Stitch from the movie Lilo and Stitch. I love these characters. They have such a fun and funky dynamic. These two are a comedy show all of their own and they're so fun to watch throughout the entirety of the runtime. They each have their own distinct personalities but their friendship just works so perfectly. Ugh, I love them and I love their story arc. Next we move on up to number 13 on the list, who is Mulan from the movie Mulan. I love Mulan. I think she is so brave and selfless. Mulan ends up dressing up as a boy and taking her father's place when the army is calling for one male family member from each family to join the army. She eventually joins the army and while she doesn't fit in in the society back at home, she definitely proves herself to be a very strong soldier. I love this character. I think her dynamic with her side characters is just wonderful. I think her music is very beautiful and I think she is a really great character to come out of the Disney canon. Next moving on up to number 12 on the list is Peter Pan from the movie Peter Pan. I really like this character. I think he is very much a troublemaker and while I don't necessarily rank a lot of those up towards the top of my lists, this is one that's always going to make it up towards the top. Peter Pan is so fun. He is the boy that will never grow up and I love that energy from him. Peter Pan has this wonderful sense of adventure throughout his entire movie and really serves as a perfect guide to take Wendy, John, and Michael on an adventure of Neverland, which is his home. I think he's a very wonderful character. I think he invokes a lot of nostalgic emotion from a lot of audience members. And while definitely not the most sympathetic character on today's list, I really do think he adds a lot of comedy to his movie and I really do think he evenly balances out the character of Wendy, who I would argue is the secondary main character. But with that, we're moving on up to number 11 on my list, who is Anna and Elsa from the movies Frozen and Frozen 2. Now these sisters were an absolute cultural phenomenon. Everybody was singing these songs and everybody loved Queen Elsa. And while to be completely honest, if I were to say that only Elsa was the main character, she probably would have broken into the top 10 of today's list just because she was such a cultural phenomenon and that so many people loved her and that her merch is one of the top selling within the Disney company. However, because we have to put both Anna and Elsa there together, I personally feel like Anna isn't as well loved by the Disney community. While I do very much like her as a character, she does tend to fall towards the bottom of my favorites list when talking about princesses. And that's really because of the level of quirkiness. I really do feel like she is one of the most quirky of the Disney princesses. And that's just not my personal vibe for a Disney princess. So yeah, while I absolutely love both of these characters and think they're both really iconic, I do feel like their placement would have been a little bit different if they had been separated in terms of two different numbers on today's list. 
And with that, we've reached the top 10 of my favorite Disney main characters. Let me know if you have any guesses now down in the comments as to which characters are going to make it. Starting off at number 10, is Bambi from the movie Bambi. Now I've said many times that this movie is very difficult for me to watch and that is still true, but Bambi is a very easy character to emotionally invest in because of the truly traumatic events that he experiences in his movie. At one point he and his mother are eating and there is a rustling in the bushes. His mother tells him to run and to not look back and so he does and his mother is never able to follow him. Unfortunately, she does pass away in this movie, and so Bambi needs to figure out how to live on his own and how to become the next Prince of the Forest. His arc to become that is very emotional, and I very much do feel for this character in many different ways. I think as young as he is and as weak as he may seem, he is very strong, and I absolutely love him. And I just want to give him the biggest hug. He deserves it. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number nine on my list who is the character Moana from the movie Moana. I love Moana. She is such a great and strong princess. Moana is tasked with bringing the heart of Tefiti across the sea with Maui to restore it in order to bring life back into the surrounding islands, which are very slowly fading. I think she has a lot of strength, a lot of will, and I think she is a very determined princess. She is a character that is very easily to emotionally invest in at the start of her movie. And I think audiences alike, no matter where you come from, can very much look at Moana and very much see a strong and confident young woman. Next, moving on up to number eight on the list is Lady and the Tramp from the movie Lady and the Tramp. I love these characters. I think they're so cute. And honestly, this is in my opinion, one of the greatest Disney love stories. This movie really shows us these two characters falling in love over a period of time. It's not an instant attraction between the two. Lady comes from an upper class household and Tramp wanders the streets. He doesn't have a specific house that he ties himself down to. However, by the end, he realizes the love of a family that Lady shows him and he becomes a part of her family. I love these two characters. I think they're so, so cute. Up next at number seven is the character Hercules from the movie Hercules. Now I think this character also has a great arc, seeing as he very much is a character that feels like he doesn't fit in with the rest of the world at the beginning of the movie. When he finds out that's because he's from the world of Olympus, it starts to make a little bit more sense and he gets a more clear path in his life. He eventually proves himself a true hero by sacrificing his life for Meg, and I think this is a character that every audience member, no matter who you are, will emotionally invest in. Not only because of wanting to be a good person and to strive for goodness, but also also for the way that he treats Megara. He is a very sweet and nurturing partner to her. Next at number six on today's list is the character Snow White from the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now because of the three character rule that I put in place, I can't include all seven dwarves, but Snow White is honestly a wonderful character. I truly believe that she is the embodiment of kindness. Snow White is probably the Disney character with one of the purest hearts that we have ever seen, and therefore it is very easy to love her and to emotionally invest and to hope that she comes through at the end of her movie safe from the clutches of the evil queen. She is a lot more proactive in her movie than a lot of people think, setting up rules for the household with the dwarves, and also showing a lot of physical strength in her run through the woods. I love this character. I love what she has to offer not only in her movie, but also in terms of the Disney canon, and she is absolutely a strong princess for being the first one ever. Up next at number five on today's list is Belle and Beast from the movie Beauty and the Beast. Now I love these characters. I think they each have their very own individual arc, with Belle sort of brushing Gaston to the side at the beginning, but eventually standing up to him when she's able to do so with the Beast, and the Beast starting to learn kindness and compassion and humanity from Belle. I think the two of them have very different personalities, but very much are able to balance each other out, and I think this is a wonderful dynamic between two leading Disney characters, specifically in a romantic Disney movie. It is very easy to latch on to both characters and to hope that they both end up together and okay at the end of their movie. Up next at number four on today's list is the character Quasimodo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo is an absolute sweetheart. He is so loving and kind, especially to a world that does not treat him kindly for his physical differences. Quasimodo is the hunchback of Notre Dame, as the title suggests, and he has nothing but love in his heart. He truly cares about his friends, Phoebus and Esmeralda, and will do anything he can to protect both of them 
from Frollo, who is perhaps one of the most evil Disney villains in any Disney movie. I love Quasimodo, and I love that what some people would call a disability in a character does not hold him back at all, and in fact makes him even stronger than a lot of the other characters in his movie. Up next at number three on my list is the character Dumbo from the movie Dumbo. Now, I know a lot of people would not expect to see him in a top 10, but I love this character and I think he is so sweet and just absolutely adorable. There is no way you can't watch this movie and just like absolutely take on this like protective nature, much like Timothy Q. Mouse does for Dumbo. Dumbo is mistreated so often in his movie that it's actually so wonderful to see another character stand up for him. And I think that a lot of audience members like to think that they would also do the same if Dumbo was in their life. He is such a sweetheart, and the scene when he goes to visit his mother is just absolutely heart-wrenching and really makes you feel for him and want to be there to hold him and give him a hug and just to tell him everything is gonna be okay. Because thankfully, it is at the end of his movie. Up next at number two on my list is Princess Tiana from the movie The Princess and the Frog. I love Princess Tiana. She was an instant favorite for me when this movie came out. I love her resilience her strength, and her determination to make all of her dreams come true. What I love about this character is her arc. She starts out very pigeonholed in wanting to make this restaurant that her father has dreamed of for his entire life come to reality, but eventually realizes that she can make that happen while also making time for love and for fun in her life. And while her mother tells her this at the beginning, she sort of brushes it off until she discovers it for herself. I also love that when any naysayers appear in her life, she is very quick to take all of that energy that she feels, that fire that that interaction brings out in her, and to put that into her dreams and her passions and uses it as fuel to make all of her dreams come true. And I love her message of not only wishing on stars, but putting in hard work to see all of the dreams come true. And with that, friends, we've reached number one on my list of favorite Disney main characters. Have you possibly guessed who it could be? Yes, in a very biased, not turn of events, at number one is Ariel from the movie The Little Mermaid. Oh, how I love Ariel, and it is a rare day when I don't rank her at number one one on a ranking list. This character is emotional investment for me at its highest peak. We start out learning very early on that Ariel is invested in the human world. She's always wanted to go there and to belong to that world. However, her father hates that world because of what happened to her mother. She sings the song Part of Your World at the very beginning of the movie, and from that moment on, audiences love her and are rooting for her for the rest of her film. It is so wonderful getting to see her get a glimpse of her dreams in those three days when she's able to go on land, but it's also so heart-wrenching and emotional when she is finally able to join the world and marry the man of her dreams, but also with her father's blessing. Again, I think her relationship with her father is very tremulous at the beginning of this movie. However, the way it comes around in the end is truly heartwarming, and I love getting to see Ariel reach her happily ever after every single time I watch this movie. Whew. And with that, friends, we have talked about 50 of Disney's main characters in Disney animated movies. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful Disney characters. If you liked today's video, make sure to like this video down below and subscribe so that way you never miss magic from me. And leave me a comment down below and let me know who is your favorite Disney main character in a Disney movie. Thank you so much for all of the love on all of these videos. I am having so much fun making these long form videos for you guys. And I am so excited for the future of this channel. I have so many more exciting ideas that I cannot wait to share with you guys. So until next time, friends, stay magical, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you all real soon.